Bureau of Land Management is conducting an emergency wild horse gather, which began June 8th in the Jackson Mountains Herd Management Area, or HMA, near Winnemucca, Nevada. The BLM Winnemucca District began an emergency gather of 630 excess wild horses nearly one month earlier than planned because of drought conditions and the effects of the drought on the body condition of wild horses, particularly in the southern portion of the HMA. History reminds us that this is a fragile area that can quickly change from moderate conditions to extremely poor conditions in the blink of an eye. This HMA has a history of water and forage shortages during times of drought, especially when there are excess wild horses. 2007 was the last time this area had a horse gather, and about 990 horses were removed. Due to the lack of forage and water in 2007, wild horse health was compromised, and subsequently a large number of the animals removed died at BLM's short-term holding facility. Since the 2007 horse gather, the population has climbed significantly again to estimates of 930 animals at the conclusion of the 2012 foaling season. The amount of wild horses that the land can support in this HMA, or what we call the appropriate management level, is 130 to 217 adult wild horses. A population survey was conducted April 9th and 10th in 2012. At that time, a direct count of wild horses revealed about 738 adult wild horses and 96 foals, with many more foals expected to be born in April and May. The middle and north end of the HMA aren't in desperate shape, but do have overpopulations of horses that tax the water and vegetation over time. The southern end is much more serious, with perennial vegetation like Indian rice grass or winter fat that should return year after year, not returning at all. There is minimal or no green up on this year's forage. The wild horses within the southern area are foraging on last year's cheat grass and shrubs, which is not meeting their nutritional requirements. The BLM hosted a tour for stakeholders on May 4th of the southern part of the Jackson Mountains HMA to show them the concerns and how we are working to mitigate them. Excess animals, depleted rangeland, animal health, marginal if not going down, is why we're here today. And it's pleasing that we're here to join others because it's very evident all of us care about this. It's just not a BLM concern. You know, ranchers, congressmen, BLM, NDOW, Fish and Wildlife Service, county commissioners, consultants, you know, we don't want to have an incident like 2007. But healthy rangelands allow for wildlife, permitted livestock, and healthy horses. What you'll see today is not healthy rangeland, but believe me, with excess animals, the conditions of the range, we do not have a thriving ecological balance. We are not in balance. And that's the purpose of today's visit, to get the eyes and ears. We want open dialogue out there, the tour group stopped at Trail Springs in the southern end of the HMA, the area of most concern. This is an area where large numbers of animals have produced heavy trailing on the mountainside between the spring, where the water tanks are, and food sources that are further and further away. The distance between the food and water has increased because the forage has been depleted for miles around the spring. In the past few months, water sources in the southern area of the HMA have continued to decrease in flow. The impact of too many horses watering at the Trail Springs area has resulted in the need for the BLM to intervene. We're out here in the Jackson Mountains herd management area. We're at the Trail Springs trough. This area has had about 200 horses that are staying here and watering in this specific spring since about December of the year. This spring has reduced its flow in the last month and a half to only half a gallon a minute. 
Another stop on the tour was in the Jackson Mountains grazing allotment at the Livestock Permittees Windmill Tank, located outside the herd management area. Due to escalating conditions, the permittee voluntarily moved his livestock out of this area of concern. Scarce flowing water isn't the only issue plaguing this HMA. Historic grazing, as well as past and current overpopulations of wild horses, have degraded this range to the point there is little residual plant vegetation. When there's no vegetation covering the topsoil, the topsoil gets blown away. With no topsoil to retain what little rainfall we get, the result is no more plant regrowth. Melanie explains utilization, upland use. This morning we're standing on top of Sugarloaf Knob in the Jackson Mountains herd management area. Um, behind us we have the Black Rock Desert and the Black Rock Playa. We have a large plume of dust coming up off the playa at this point. On an average year you'd have water on the playa. Obviously you wouldn't have dust blowing. Available food sources are also scarce and being overused in detrimental ways. Normally, wild horses eat forage on valley floors first in the winter months, making their way up mountainsides to the top of the mountains when it's warmest, because the snow has melted and the forage is finally available. However, that is not the case here. The horses had severely depleted forage at the top by last October, leaving very little to grow back this spring. In the Jackson Mountains still, we're down by a water source, but we're up, working up on the uplands here where you would tend to not see so much use because the horses have to go uphill. It's harder to get to vegetation. And if we look down here at the sagebrush, you can see where the horses have pawed into the brush itself to try to get this little bit of vegetation that's been laying under here. It's mostly cheatgrass, but even that is something that's more palatable than, say, the sagebrush or the ephedra for them to eat. And so you can just see the really heavy to severe uh, utilization that the horses are, are putting out here in an effort to get enough forage and feed to keep them going. This time of year we should have green up, we should have green grass all around here from the snow getting caught in the sagebrush and, and so forth. You should have a, quite a few green plants around the base and we just have none, it's completely dry. Here's what some of the tour attendees had to say. We do share some of Bob's concern about not gathering down to low AML and the ones that probably come back in and do something like that. Based on the tour that we went on today, I think that the BLM is, is certainly not acting too soon on this, on this whole situation of, of uh, looking at making sure that we don't end up in an emergency with, this, with, with these horses on the Jacksons. Um, based on the conditions that I saw today, it looks more like August than it does May. The grass that, that, that there is is only last year's grass. There was zero green up. Uh, zero new grass out there. Um, the closer you got to what water sources there are, you could see heavy use. Well, I think I got to commend uh, Mr. DeLong. He's offered to uh, use his wa the water that is his property. It's his own personal property to make sure that the horses um, don't die of thirst out there. He's he's got some of it off right now, so that it makes it accommodates him to get his cattle moved. While hauling water, installing water tanks, and removing cattle at the Jackson Mountains HMA helped alleviate some water issues temporarily, it will not fix the problem long term. The BLM began the initial steps involved with water trapping through the placement of a temporary water trough and storage tanks, and by hauling water, but this activity scattered the animals away from dwindling water sources. We determined the placement of panels for a water trap would further add to the skittish behavior of the horses, and we discontinued water trapping efforts and kept as low a human presence as possible so the horses would continue to come and drink. Automated wildlife trail cameras were used to assess the condition of the animals near the water holes. 
These unmanned cameras confirmed the horses have deteriorated in condition over the last several weeks. It increasingly became apparent that the condition of the animals was deteriorating to the point that holding off gathering would put us in the position of gathering animals in declining health if we waited. Therefore, the gather began almost a month early. Because the gather has started during foaling season, extra precautions and measures are in place to ensure safe and humane handling during gather operations. Extra precautions will be taken to ensure that foals are not left behind or orphaned in the field. We will ensure that the distance animals are moved to the gather site is based on the terrain, environmental conditions, and animal health. And extra pens are in place at the temporary holding corrals for mares and foals, and to separate weaker horses from stronger ones. The BLM is committed to ensuring that this area can continue to sustain healthy horses on healthy rangelands. Therefore, we are humanely gathering some of the animals off the range. And they will be prepped to enter the BLM's adoption program, or they'll be sent to long-term pastures in the Midwest. Our multiple-use mission means we must ensure a balance with all users of the land so we can enjoy the land and all it has to offer for years to come.